Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant working for the NHS in central London. Thank you very much for watching this video. Now, I appreciate that this is slightly different to some of my other videos, and I was going to make this into one of those long case histories where I sort of tease out the details and sort of allow you to do a bit of detective work to work out what's happened to uh, this case. I'm just going to skip to the end, really, for this. I saw two sort of relatively young people under the age of 25 who had been using something known as nitrous oxide as a, as a sort of legal drug. In the UK, nitrous oxide, or, or laughing gas as it uh, used to be called, had been using laughing gas as a sort of recreational drug. They were inhaling this, sometimes directly from the cancer, which I think is quite difficult, or, or they were putting it into a balloon and sort of inhaling it from the balloon. What that does is that it gives you a sort of state of euphoria for a few seconds to a few minutes and it can also increase the potency of some of the other recreational drugs that they were taking. Anyway, um, these two were taking it sort of off and on on weekends and when they go to parties. Uh, they didn't really think it was a big deal because it's at the moment, as far as I understand, it's still legal in this country. Uh, and so they thought, well, it can't be that bad. And they were pretty shocked when I found out that actually the reason why they came to me is because they were so tired and they felt so fatigued and they didn't realise what was going on and they thought it was sleep apnea or up airway resistance syndrome or something like that. But when I found out that actually it was these little canisters that were causing this problem, these little whippet things, uh, this nitrous oxide that they were inhaling was causing their tiredness, they were quite shocked and uh, one of them actually uh, made me promise that I'd do a, a quick video about it and, and this is the video now. Anyway, so the reason why this has caused their tiredness is because when you take nitrous oxide for a particularly long period of time, sort of, as I said, weekends and parties, it knocks out a vitamin B12 in your system. Now, if you keep knocking out vitamin B12, it depletes your body of this vitamin. And this vitamin is particularly useful in uh, creating a, a sort of lining around the nerves in your whole body. And it's actually the only thing that can do that. If you don't have vitamin B12, the nerves don't work quite as well. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the, the details of it. But basically, after a while, uh, there's lots of nerves in your brain, lots of nerves in your spine. And at the very extreme end, you can get something known as subacute degeneration of the cord. Now, what that does is it, it um, it's actually quite scary. You lose the function of your arms and legs, you become paralyzed and you can't really move anymore, quadriplegic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, my two uh, patients weren't nearly as severe as that. They were very, very tired. They were sleeping all day and they, they couldn't work out why they were so fatigued. And they thought they had sleep apnea, which is why they saw me, but actually they had this uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, there are some problems with vitamin B12 deficiency caused by nitrous oxide because some people think, ah, oh, thank you, Vic, for letting me know. I'm glad I watched this. I'm just going to carry on taking nitrous oxide, but I'll also take some vitamin B12 so I don't get into this issue. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You can't take it because it sort of knocks out all your vitamin B12 and it takes a bit of time for it to grow back, as far as I understand. Uh, the other problem is, uh, I tell you what, I will just, just stop taking the nitrous oxide and take the vitamin B12 afterwards, I should be fine. Now, unfortunately, that's not the case either. If you've got all the symptoms of, say, subacute degeneration of the cord, we obviously stop nitrous oxide and say, look, take lots and lots of vitamin B12, sometimes inject it and things like that. But that's sometimes not enough to stop you from getting really, really bad. So some people can be paralysed for life. And that's really, really serious. And, you know, these young people are really sort of concerned about this. And I'm worried that they're going to be stuck like this for a very long time. And I don't want that to happen to other people out there. The third problem is that a lot of people go, well, I know what I'll do. I'll go straight to the GP. I'll get myself tested for vitamin B12. And, and as doctors, that's what we tend to do. We just check vitamin B12. But actually what you need to do uh, is not check vitamin B12 as, and rely on it so much because it can look high or even normal levels even though you are deficient, you, even though you're depleted of vitamin B12. It's not a great test, unfortunately. What you need to do is check vitamin B12 as well as uh, methylmalonic acid, I don't know if I can say that right, I'll write it here, and homocysteine as well. If you check all three, that will give your doctor a, a bit of a heads up and if you are actually depleted of vitamin B12, it's really, really important that you get a, a proper analysis of the amount of vitamin in your, in your body to make sure that you're not actually getting this problem. Now, I know I'm sounding like an old man, please don't take drugs and, and things like that, but 
it's not as safe as people think it is please don't take it if i if this reaches one young person that uh, stops them from becoming paralyzed for the whole of their life i'll be really really happy uh, if you're getting very tired and you take these things please be careful stop it go and see your doctor try and get checked out um, and I apologise to the rest of my YouTube channel um, subscribers. I, I, know, I know I don't make these sorts of videos very often, but it felt like an important thing. And as I said, I promised uh, um, this patient that I would do this video just to sort of get the word out there. And if anyone wants to share this and sort of spread the word a little bit and just explain the dangers about this drug, uh, I would be very grateful. I'll try and put a um, picture up of these little canisters that people use, the little silver canisters or whippets that you see lying around on the streets. Um, I'm not sure if I can find a video or, or, a, or a, a picture of it, but I hope you know what I mean anyway. Um, I guess that's the end. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.